Last week, the results of a major new clinical trial looking at the effects of time-restricted eating on weight loss were published in the prominent New England Journal of Medicine. This publication triggered a lot of discussion on social media as well as in traditional media. The New York Times, for example, published an article with the headline, Scientists Find No Benefit to Time-Restricted Eating. In this video, we will take a thorough look at this clinical study and others that have looked into the same question to find out whether time-restricted eating really has no benefits. Welcome to Nourished by Science. My name is Mario, and on this channel we are talking about all things nutrition and health. In this video we'll take a look at time-restricted eating, or TRE, and its effect on weight loss. I'll first go over what TRE is and where the idea comes from that it could trigger weight loss. Then we'll discuss the results of a new major study on the effect of TRE on weight loss that was published last week in the prestigious New England Journal of Medicine. And lastly, We'll briefly review previous studies on the impact of TRE on weight loss to see what new knowledge the new study provides and where the field stands. We'll close by discussing whether TRE is a useful tool for weight loss. TRE has been a very popular form of intermittent fasting for the last 8 to 10 years. In TRE, all food intake happens inside of a window of usually 6 to 10 hours each day. Outside of that window, calorie intake is not allowed. A popular version is 816 TRE where you eat all of your meals in an 8-hour window and then fast for the remaining 16 hours of the day. So, in 8-16 TRE, you could eat between, say, 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. every day, and then fast from 4 p.m. until 8 a.m. the next day. Or, as another example, you could eat only between 12 noon to 8 p.m. every day, and then fast between 8 p.m. and 12 noon the next day. Now, you may have tried TRE, maybe because you heard that it can help you lose some weight. What is that idea even based on? I think it's fair to say that, particularly here on YouTube, there are a lot of channels that make it seem that TRE is the end-all be-all of achieving and maintaining a healthy body weight. And that may be based partly on some of the first studies done on TRE. So let's go back to the birth of the concept of TRE. In a study on mice conducted about 10 years ago, investigators noticed that if they gave mice a high-fat diet instead of their usual boring chow diet, they would gain a lot of weight and become obese. Well, that wasn't the interesting part. That mice become obese on specific high-fat diets was already well known. What was interesting is that the investigators noticed that mice love this high-fat diet so much that they would even wake up frequently during their normal sleeping period to feed, basically eating 24 hours a day if they had access to it. So they tried a very simple experiment. They gave them the same high-fat diet but limited access to it to 8 hours per day. What they observed was pretty stunning. The mice quickly learned that the yummy stuff would be taken away from them after a while, and so they started eating a lot more during the 8 hours during which they had access to the food, eventually eating almost as many calories as when they had access to it for 24 hours. But they didn't gain nearly as much weight. So what this study suggested is that limiting food intake to 8 hours and then fasting for the remaining 16 hours every day had some kind of almost magical protective effect against weight gain even when the mice were overeating fatty food. And that idea caught fire rapidly, probably because it's so appealing to be able to eat as much as you want, maybe even regularly overeat and still not gain any weight. So the natural question is, has this idea been tested in people? Yes, it has. And the largest of these studies was just published last week. This new paper that was published last week by a Chinese group of researchers in the New England Journal of Medicine actually asked the question whether adding TRE to a calorically restricted diet has additional weight loss benefits. The researchers recruited 139 patients with obesity and randomized them either to restrict their calorie intake or the same calorie restriction in addition to 816 TRE where all calories had to be consumed over just 8 hours. Both groups were told to reduce their daily calorie intake to about 75% of their usual intake. The TRE group was also asked to eat only between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. and to fast between 4 p.m. and 8 a.m. the next day. That's a form of TRE called early time-restricted eating. Participants were asked to follow their assigned intervention for 12 months. The predefined primary endpoint was the difference between the two intervention groups in how much body weight they lost. So what happened? Participants who were asked to restrict their calorie intake only in the control group lost an average of 6.3 kilograms or 13.9 pounds over these 12 months. 
Now the question was, did the addition of TRE to the calorie restriction cause participants in the intervention group to lose more weight? So they lost an average of 8 kilos, or 17.6 pounds over these 12 months. That may seem like yes, TRE plus calorie restriction did cause greater weight loss than calorie restriction alone. However, according to the paper, the average difference between these two groups of 1.8 kilograms, or 4 pounds, was not statistically significant. And so the paper concluded that among patients with obesity, a regimen of time-restricted eating was not more beneficial with regard to reduction in body weight than daily calorie restriction. How can that be? 8 kilograms is quite a bit more than 6.3 kilograms, right? One important thing to understand is how much the amount of weight loss differs between individual participants in this type of study. This graph shows the weight loss for each participant in the TRE group, for example. Each bar represents the weight loss of one participant in percent from baseline. And as you can see, while some participants lost over 20% or even 30% of their baseline body weight, others lost very little or even gained weight over 12 months. That is simply because a study like this is just like real life. Some people are super motivated when they volunteer and they lose a ton of weight pretty much no matter what the intervention is. Others may lose interest in the study midway through, or maybe they go through some life crisis, or for whatever reason, they don't lose much weight or even gain weight. So in other words, it is clear that how much weight people lose in a 12-month intervention like this is only partly affected by the actual intervention and partly by things that have nothing to do with the study. You see, because the individual participants in the TRE group lost so dramatically different amounts of weight, we cannot be 100% confident that if we ran the study one more time, we would again get an average weight loss of exactly 8 kilograms in that group. What we can do, though, is use the weight loss data to estimate in which range the average weight loss would likely be if we had a chance to run the study again. In science nerd speak, that estimated range is called the 95% confidence interval. That may sound complicated, but what it means is simply that if we ran the study again, we would not be 100% confident that we would again get a weight loss of exactly 8 kilograms in the TRE group. However, the data tell us that we could be 95% confident that we would find an average weight loss in the TRE group somewhere in this range from 6.4 to 9.6 kilograms. And similarly, there was a lot of variation in weight loss in the control group. The 95% confidence interval in that group covers the range from minus 7.8 to minus 4.7 kilograms. So really the problem is that there is some uncertainty because there is quite a bit of overlap in the 95% confidence intervals. We therefore just don't have enough confidence that this difference of 1.8 kilograms seen here in this study reflects an actual difference between these interventions and isn't just a result of some random variation. So that really is why this is not statistically significant. I have seen many people argue on social media that the investigators should have simply enrolled a few more people into the study. That very same difference of 1.8 kilograms between the two groups could have been statistically significant if more people had been enrolled. That point is true, but that's not how randomized control trials work, and with good reason. Instead, it's best practice to spend some time, before you even start your trial, thinking long and hard about what kind of difference in your outcome you would consider clinically important. In this particular study, the investigators decided they wanted to be able to detect a difference in weight loss of 2.5 kilograms between the groups over 12 months. That's 5.5 pounds. And I think this is important to understand. The study was designed to detect a difference of 2.5 kilograms or more between the two intervention groups. That's why the 1.8 kilogram greater weight loss in the TRE group was not statistically significant. So that leaves us a bit in a pickle, because how do we interpret this? Does this mean that there is no benefit for sure? No, in my interpretation, it only means that the difference in weight change between these two interventions was not substantial enough to be detectable in this study Again, because the study was designed to detect differences greater than 2.5 kilograms. It is still possible that TRE added to calorie restriction could still have a meaningful impact on weight loss, but quite likely less than 2.5 kilograms over 12 months. I'm actually thinking that it is somewhat likely that TRE may have some additional benefit when added to calorie restriction, because participants in the TRE group consistently were able to reduce their calorie intake quite a bit more than those in the control group by around 100 kilocalories per day. That result to me suggests that the observed difference in weight loss of an additional 1.8 kilograms in the TRE group 
was probably not just the result of random variation, but the result of participants managing to maintain a lower calorie intake in the TRE arm of the study. I would therefore say that looking thoroughly at the data, the New York Times headline, Scientists Find No Benefit to Time-Restricted Eating, is at least a bit premature. To me, the data on weight loss and calorie intake suggests that adding 816 TRE to an intervention of calorie reduction may slightly increase the amount of weight loss. To me, even that is slightly surprising for two reasons that I'd like to discuss next. First, the change in the eating window in this study was quite small. Participants on average had an eating window of 10 and a half hours at baseline. That appeared to increase slightly to just under 11 hours in the control group and declined to around eight hours in the TRE group. So the difference here between the groups was about three hours. Certainly notable, but quite different from what I would expect in say the United States, where most published data suggests an eating window between 14 and 15 hours per day for most people. It therefore stands to reason that in the US, a reduction from say 14 to eight hours would have a greater impact on weight loss than in these Chinese participants where the eating window was reduced from around 11 to eight hours. The second point is that this study investigated specifically whether adding TRE to a weight loss intervention focused on calorie counting and calorie reduction would have additional benefits. I think the study adequately answered that question, but I would argue that this is not the most relevant question. I've always felt that the premise of TRE was that simply reducing the window of time during which food intake was allowed would reduce snacking outside of this window, for example, in front of the TV in the evening, and thereby automatically reduce calorie intake. And by prescribing a specific number of calories that were allowed per day, I would have thought that this potential benefit of TRE would not be able to materialize. So to summarize, what we learned here in this randomized controlled trial is that if someone is already restricting their calorie intake, then reducing the eating window from around 11 hours per day to around 8 hours per day either doesn't lead to further weight loss or at best to a small amount of additional weight loss. How does this study compare with other studies that have looked at the effect of TRE on weight loss? I looked for randomized controlled trials with a follow-up duration of at least 8 weeks because if we are looking at weight loss as an endpoint, shorter studies don't really tell us much. One additional study has been published with a somewhat similar design to the Chinese study we just discussed. And in that study, participants were asked to restrict their calorie intake either with or without TRE. In this case, the intervention was a 12-hour TRE, so not a particularly restricted eating window, but it was conducted in the United States where the average eating window is between 14 and 15 hours per day for most people. So the reduction in the daily eating window may have been similar to the Chinese study. A big difference here was that weight loss was assessed only over eight weeks. So even though this study was a lot shorter, the results are amazingly similar, shown here on the right side with the results from the Chinese RCT published last week shown on the left side. In this study, the difference between TRE and control was of similar magnitude, but almost statistically significant. The average difference in weight loss was 1.6 kilograms and the 95% confidence interval only just grazed zero. So if this 95% confidence interval did not include zero, then this would be considered statistically significant because then we could be 95% confident that TRE leads to additional weight loss when it's added to an otherwise calorie restricted diet. Another four studies have directly compared the effect of TRE on weight loss against a control group that did not follow TRE. In all of these studies, participants did not follow a calorie restricted diet. So TRE was the only intervention tested. I have summarized all of these here in this one graph. Don't let this confuse you. I'll guide you through the key results. Two of these studies did not show an effect of TRE. The one here on the far left was a six month trial comparing 12 hour TRE versus a non TRE control that ate in a window of at least 14 hours. I suppose one could argue that eating in a 12 hour window isn't really TRE. In the Chinese study we discussed earlier, for example, the control group had an eating window of 11 hours. So that already shows you one challenge in this field, namely that it isn't all that well defined what TRE is and what an adequate eating window in a control group would be. The other study that did not show an effect of TRE on weight loss was a 12 week trial comparing eight hour TRE versus a control group that was asked to eat over at least 11 hours. So again, the control group here potentially overlaps with the TRE intervention group in that first study. So it's a bit of a mess. This study here showed basically no real weight loss in either group, 
and no difference between the two groups whatsoever. The other two studies did show an effect of theory on body weight though. So remember, these diets were not by design calorie restricted, but participants spontaneously reduced their calorie intake on the theory diet in these two studies and lost weight. One of these studies was a 12-week randomized controlled trial comparing 10-hour TRE to a control group eating over a 15-hour window. In that study, participants on TRE lost 2.1 kilograms more over 12 weeks than controls. The other study was an 8-week randomized controlled trial in which investigators compared two TRE groups against a control group eating in a 13 and a half hour window. The TRE groups were asked to limit their food intake to either 4 hours per day or 6 hours per day. In both of these TRE groups, participants lost 3.3% more than controls over 8 weeks. Sorry I'm showing these data here partly as kilograms and partly as percent. That's the way the data are shown in the papers. I do think that the weight losses seen in these last two trials are roughly comparable. Now, what is notable to me here about these four studies is that it does seem that studies that restricted the eating window more saw greater weight change. So which conclusions are we drawing from all of these studies on the impact of TRE on body weight? First, one thing is absolutely clear. The early finding from mouse experiments that TRE somehow makes calories irrelevant and mice magically resistant to obesity does not apply to people. In humans, TRE is no miracle intervention on its own when it comes to normalizing body weight. Second, there are really two ways to interpret the modest weight loss or trend towards greater weight loss seen with TRE in some studies. One, we could look at the averages and conclude that TRE has no or at best a modest effect on weight loss. That's the interpretation I see the most and it isn't wrong. However, I think another interpretation fits the data better. If we consider the huge differences in weight loss seen in all trials, we could ask the question of whether TRE may be a really valuable tool with a potentially major effect on body weight for at least some people. And vice versa, this would mean that for others, TRE does very little to nothing. My best guess would be that those people who benefit the most are those who have a long eating window of 14, 15 or more hours every day and who have a habit of eating a lot of junk food or drinking a lot of alcohol in the evening hours. I would guess that if these folks can succeed in making, say, 8 to 10 hour TRE work as a regular part of their lifestyle at least 5 or 6 days of the week, it may make a real difference in their weight all by itself. For those who are already eating within an 11 or 12 hour window though, I think the benefits of TRE on body weight are minimal. Unless they reduce their eating window very dramatically to less than say 6 hours or so, which most people would not be willing to do for an extended period of time. If you are someone who is really motivated to lose weight and you wanted to give TRE a try, I don't think there's any reason why you shouldn't. It may well help a little bit, or maybe you are one of those people who benefit a lot. However, you should have the right expectations and not blame yourself if you don't lose weight. Let me just add that in this video we only discuss the effects of TRE on weight loss. TRE has also been suggested to improve health independent of any effects on body weight. That though is a topic for a separate video, so watch out for that and make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on this type of content. I'd like to finish with that New York Times headline that scientists find no benefit to time-restricted feeding. Allow me to fix that title a little bit to bring it more in line with what the new study really showed. Scientists find no major additional weight loss with time-restricted eating when added on to a calorie-restricted diet in a Chinese population that already practices a moderate form of time-restricted eating at baseline. With that, we have come to the end of this video. I hope this video addressed your most pressing questions about this new paper and about where this leaves the field in terms of the impact of TRE on weight loss. If you enjoyed it, I would appreciate it if you liked the video and shared it on social media or with anyone you think may be interested. Thanks for watching. Take care.